Welcome into the Ether, a podcast brought to you by ETHUB, the essential source for Ethereum information. Into the Ether features talks with prominent guests in the community, as well as weekly recaps of the ETHUB newsletter. I want to take a second to talk about our sponsor, Real Tea. Real Tea tokenizes rent producing real estate properties as ERC 20s and allows Ethereum users to invest in them. By owning a share in one of the properties, you have a right to part of the monthly rent payment, which is paid out every 24 hours and die. My favorite part about this project is that it's in their vision to integrate these tokens into DeFi apps on Ethereum. And the first property that's sold, you could actually trade them on Uniswap, which is really cool. The current return on most properties is between 10 to 13% a year. Head over to realty.co to check them out. Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Ether. Today, my guest is Leighton Cusack. Leighton is the CEO of Pool Together, a no-loss savings game built on Ethereum. Thanks for joining me today, Leighton. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, your your products, I really like it. I actually am currently in a pool, and I've been. It's one of the products I'm kind of like actively playing with every day. So awesome. Um, I'm ex- yeah, yeah. I'm excited for this conversation. I know you guys are building a lot. Just before we kind of di- dive in, I want to just get a little background info on you and like kind of how the project came together. Can you just kind of tell me a little bit about yourself and what you were doing before you launched Pool Together? Um, yeah. So I would kind of categorize myself just as a, um, a software entrepreneur. I uh, had one company I was co-founder and CEO of uh, started in 2011, and that was a fintech company, but not blockchain. Um, So kind of just focused in the US, and we built uh, software to facilitate uh, donations. And I ran that from 2011 to 2017 uh, when we sold the company, and then I was uh, stayed around until 2018, left in 2018, and um, in 2019 started working on uh, Pool Together. And like, how did the idea come about? Was it just kind of like an aha moment or, you know, are no loss games, no loss lotteries? Is it something you've always been kind of just fascinated about or how did, how did that idea finally click in your head? Yeah. So, um, it's pretty interesting. I I've always really been interested in how do different financial tools, um, help people uh, achieve financial health or specifically financial mobility, right? So like how do, these different things, like we have like the bond market or the stock market or savings accounts or credit cards, how do the the tools themselves help contribute to um, the financial health that people have? And so I was doing a lot of research on that topic and researching a bunch of these different, kind of the history of insurance and the history of the stock market, et cetera. Um, and in that research, I was talking to a friend actually about about my research. And in, that, in the process of that conversation, my friend was like, hey, well, have you ever heard of no loss lotteries? Those are really interesting. And I was like, no, I hadn't. And so I started researching that topic, prize link savings. And, um, and that was how I, that was how I came across it. So it really was not an idea I came up with. I just, um, started reading about it, realizing it, it was a really popular, um, financial tool, but it had never been done on the blockchain and doing it on the blockchain had a lot of benefits over traditional alternatives. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I know I'm going to have you dive into a little bit of how it works here in a couple of minutes, but it's definitely an obvious fit for Ethereum in my opinion. It's kind of like, oh, well, this is yeah. like a perfect fit. Like it's kind of hard to run across those use cases. Like I feel like sometimes we're almost like shoehorning ideas into Ethereum, but like this is one where it's like, no, this is absolutely a perfect use case. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the part that I think that was, you know, my, it was just me connecting the dot there, but, um, but I, I can't take credit for the idea because the idea has been around for a little while. I guess one more little background item, just how, how big is your team these days or how many founders do you have with you? Yeah, so it's uh, three co-founders. So Brendan and uh, Chuck are my co-founders. They're based in Vancouver and um, super, super talented guys who uh, probably don't get as much of the credit and limelight as they deserve. So anytime I can talk about them, I like to. They're They're awesome. Well, I think that's a good kind of background on where the idea came from, where I guess you came from and your team as well. So I want to dive into the the app now. I guess I'll have you start at kind of a more basic question, but you know, I'm sure people listening to this haven't heard of Pool Together, or haven't played with it yet. Um, kind of at a high level, can you just explain exactly what it is? Yes. So the, the basic idea is um, of prize link savings, aka no loss lotteries. The basic idea is you deposit money um, for a chance to win a prize. And if you don't win, you still get all your money back. And that sounds too good to be true. But the reason that's possible is because the prize that you have the chance to win is funded by the interest that accrues on all the money from all the, uh, all the money that's been deposited, all the tickets that have been purchased. So for a real concrete example with the way Pool Together works, 
our, uh, we have a dye pool. Right now it has a million dye in it. Um, and that's been deposited by about 2,500 unique people. Um, and that generates a prize of right now $1,600 a week. So each of those 2,500 people have a chance to win that $1,600 each week. And their chance to win is directly proportional to how much money they've deposited. So if you deposit, you know, uh, 100 100 die, 100 dollars. You then have, you know, 100 divided by a million chance of chance of winning. Whatever the math is on that, I guess it's one in 10,000. I think. So that's uh, so that's yeah. So that that's the basic idea of of, of prize link savings account. Yeah, nice. And, and you mentioned a little bit or alluded to this, like this idea has been around for a little while. Um, you know, how do how does this work in the more traditional sense? Like there there's these exist right in the traditional finance world and kind of what advantages are there to building this on something like ethereum or on DeFi? yeah so these exist in in the in the regular financial world um i think the big advantages to having it on DeFi, you know the first is that it's global right so you can have like an unprecedented economies of scale which means you know much larger much larger prizes um the second is that it's uh, it's open source and auditable. So the problem that a lot of people face in traditional finance is a bank may say, we're offering a $10,000 prize to anyone who opens a savings account this month, but how do you know you know whether how they're actually picking that winner? And how do you know if it's fair? And how do you know if your account was even included, right? So there's no, um, uh, with bu- building it on DeFi, you have kind of a, um, a transparency that creates authenticity. So you can trust trust the system. So I think that's a second big, uh, big advantage of it. Um, and then I think the third is that it's it's built with smart contracts, which means the you know the overhead to administrate the actual program is really really low. Um, so if I were going to do this in fiat world, it would require all sorts of um, all sorts of extra costs. And if you're dealing with interest, the extra costs can eat away at the prize really quick. So those are three really big reasons. And then I think the fourth that we get really excited about is it becomes composable, right? And programmable. And so now other um, DeFi protocols can plug into it. Other DeFi apps can plug into it. And again, that's another thing that you're not going to have with um, traditional, traditional price link savings products. Yeah. All big advantages. And I, I guess one of the weird things about like doing it in the traditional finance world is you mentioned like a bank might say, Hey, you know, all the people that open a savings account in the next month, you're going to be putting this price all those people have to use that bank, right? Like on Ethereum, yeah. like you said, the global reach is just a huge advantage. Yeah, and I think one thing that you lose too with the bank, and I think people like with with um, Pool Together is you know exactly how you stand in terms of your chance to win at all times, right? So yeah. it's not like there, there's complete transparency. You can deposit say, I know I have 100 tickets and I know there's a million tickets sold. And so you always know and I think that's a really powerful concept too. So you've talked a little bit about users joining and like knowing their odds and stuff. Do you just kind of like want to walk through, you know, how, how does a user enter um, a pool together lottery? So right now um, there's two pools. We actually just launched a, a new one today. There's a weekly pool um, that uses DAI and there's a there's a daily pool that uses USDC. So ju- users can kind of choose um, based on what, uh, what cryptocurrency or what stable coin I should say they prefer. But basically, you you come to our site, you um, you can uh, deposit with whatever wallet we integrate with with many of the different wallets. You can deposit Dai or USDC, and um, you'll have full liquidity, meaning you can take your Dai or USDC out at any time. There's no there's no lock period of any sort. So that's kind of another another big advantage. Um, and then once you deposit, you will be eligible to win. Um, th- this is one thing that's important. You'll be eligible to win the next and all future prizes. So a lot of p- times people, we get the question, well, what happens if someone deposits a million die right before the prize is awarded? So the way the system works is you're not eligible to win the prize unless you've been in the pool for the whole duration of um, the time the interest has been accruing for that prize. So for example, the prizes are awarded every Friday. So if you deposit today, um, you wouldn't be eligible for uh, the prize this Friday, but you'd be eligible for next week's Friday prize plus all future prizes until you withdraw your money at any time. Gotcha. And to enter, is it like one tickets, one die, essentially how it works? And then you get your odds based on the size of the pool? Yeah. And so right on the w- when you hit join the pool, the first thing you'll see is a screen. It'll ask you how much, how much die you want. You get one ticket for each die, and it will show you exactly what your odds will be. Yeah, and I guess you know you already you already said in like it's kind of the whole point, but like the beauty in this right is if you buy in with a hundred die, yeah, you get a hundred tickets for as long as you want, but at any point you can take that hundred die back, right? You you don't actually ever lose your initial investment, and that's just such a huge perk to this. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. The loss aversion, avoiding, you know, avoiding any losses, we think a super important part of building a product that can onboard people into crypto. So I want to talk a little bit like about how it's working under the hood. You obviously talked about composability and like the beauty of this is you guys can leverage other DeFi products. And I know you do a lot in like a single transaction that happens. So, you know, say I go in, I I join on a Wednesday, so I'm eligible for next Friday's pool. Um, what exactly is happening when I throw in those 100 die and I get my tickets, but I know the protocol itself is doing a lot. Can you just kind of walk us through that? The purchase ticket um, function, it, when you when you're using Dai, it's automatically going to in one in one transaction, it sends that Dai uh, directly uh, well through pools together as contracts into Compound, and then Compound sends the C Dai back to pool together's contracts, which which store the C Dai, um, and and that's that's all done in, in a single transaction. So the the, the value there is that um, there's never there's never die that's just kind of sitting dormant. It's always going to be earning interest in um, in pool together, or sorry, in compound. It's always going to be earning interest in compound, uh, making the prize in pool together. Um, so that's that's kind of the mechanics of it. The 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 th- one additional step is when the um, you can deposit at any time, but when you actually become eligible to win, the pool together smart contract does mint you a um, PL die token. Um, and that's an ERC seven 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 token, and so that that's when you actually have a ticket that means you're eligible to win. Um, and previous to that, you know, for whatever how many ever days that would be, um, your your money is essentially sitting there waiting to be eligible. On the prize structure, say there's a hundred people in the pool, I put in one die. Are my odds one in a hundred essentially? Does does the protocol take any fee or anything like that? Uh, there's no fee on the protocol level. Um, we we and I I want to emphasize that because we when we first launched the V1 we were taking a 10% um, fee like wait this is like way back in May but ever since we launched the V2 we've never taken a fee um, and that was like a change that we felt like was pretty important but obviously some people still just remember it from like back in June so there's no fee. Um, but in terms of your odds, your odds wouldn't be one in a hundred. They would be, it's proportional to the total number of tickets, not necessarily the number of players. So for example, right now there's 2,500 unique Ethereum addresses in, in the, in the die pool, but there's also, um, but there's a, uh, sorry, but there's a million, uh, or so there's actually 750,000 tickets that have been sold. So your, your odds of winning are proportional to the number of tickets sold, not the, not the players. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, some people might have one ticket, some people might have like a hundred thousand, yeah. what is like the biggest deposit, do you know, off the top of your head right now in the pool? Uh, I mean, it definitely changes a lot. There is, there's, in the, there's one person or I shouldn't say person, I don't know, but there's one address right now that has right a, a little over a hundred thousand, I, I believe. So that's, that's obviously really big. Um, the average size is 300. Um, but the, yeah, the average size is it's a little probably less than that right now, but that was what it was recently. And you know, on prizes too, one thing I had a question about, and I, I actually I don't know this, even though I've I've played the lottery and you know I haven't won. I think I've been in a part of three, but I haven't won yet. But I'm curious how you how do you pick the winner? I know you know randomness is very hard to do on the blockchain. So how is the winner actually picked? There's a there's a good blog post. I'll just reference this in case anyone wants more detail. There's a good blog post on our medium. Um, uh, pool together audit disclosures that kind of goes into this and some other aspects of the protocol that have um, centralization to it. But yeah, so the the winner selection uh, randomness generation is centralized. It's a commit reveal scheme. So um, basically, there's a uh, a secret that is uh, salted that's that's used to generate the randomness, which um, which is used the randomness the random number is then used to select the winner based on a proportional data structure, a data structure that's proportional to the number of tickets each person holds. Gotcha. And now is this something like your, your team's good with? Is this something you're trying to improve? Like, do you think you could ever get this to be decentralized or is it too hard to do with like, you know, front running or whatever problems you might run into? No, we're, yeah, we're super optimistic on decentralization. Um, meaning, I mean, our goal is definitely decentralization and we're really optimistic that we can do it relatively quickly because we don't, you know, we have to, the randomness is, is the biggest, most difficult thing, but there's a lot of projects working on that right now. Um, and so we don't think we need to figure that out. Like we think that in the, in the next six months, like there's some projects coming online that have solved that problem that we can leverage. And then the other, um, centralized part of the, of the protocol is, is just the actual, um, timing of the selection. Like when is the selection triggered? 
and again, that's that's a fairly simple thing to um, to decentralize. So we're we're pretty optimistic on being able to decentralize in in a pretty quick uh, time frame. You were talking a little bit about you know the average is like three hundred tickets to three hundred die in there. Some people have put up to a hundred thousand. One thing you know I've always tried to decide when I'm picking between like the die savings rate or putting some in compound. Um, I'm always trying to figure out like what's the right mix. Uh, I guess you know for a user, why pick pool together over just taking their die and, and put it in compound to earn interest? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I guess the first thing I would say is most our users use both. So like when we actually do like user interviews and talk to our users, they generally tell us that a lot of times they tell us they found out about Compound from Pool Together or vice versa. They were already using Compound and then they saw Pool Together on Compound's website and they checked it out. So, you know, I think that Compound and Pool Together, I don't think are substitutionary products. Like I think Compound serves a purpose of giving you a very small but uh, guaranteed return and Pool Together serves a purpose of giving you a very large but um, not guaranteed return. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so, so I think in terms of, you know, I, I would I think there's two, there's two kind of ways to think about how much money you'd want to put in pool together. One way is you just think like put in five, five die, right? Like, like just put in something really small because, um, then you, you have a chance to win, but you're essentially your, um, opportunity cost is nil, right? The other way is you can calculate, um, like the certain threshold to say like, oh, if I put in. 20,000 uh, die and I have that in for six months, then my chances of winning at least once will be much higher than 50%. And if I win, you know, I'll get much more than the opportunity cost I'm losing. And so you can look at it economically, but I think most people who are using pool together are not looking at it economically. I think they're looking at it as like, this is a fun thing to, to do with my money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What's what's really funny about that is I started down the path of creating an Excel sheet to calculate. This is just, this is just me. I'm like I'm just a dork to, that would actually calc this in Excel and look at it financially. But I started down the path of pretty much doing exactly what you said. I got a bit distracted. I should finish it and maybe even put it out there for people to look at and have fun with. Yeah, well, I I actually have one. I could share it with you. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I've shared it. I shared it in like the Discord before, but it's uh, it's just in like it's in like Google Sheets. But the one thing to keep in mind when you're calculating that is um, an important part of the of pool together is this concept of sponsored die. So there's uh, right now there's 250 thousand sponsored die in the pool, and that sponsored die contributes interest to the prize but is not eligible to win. And so what that means is like the expected value. If you do the mathematical equations for expected value, w you will always find that it's higher in pool together than in compound. Um, Obviously, your probability of winning might not be good over a certain period of time, but your expected value, mathematically speaking, is always higher and pooled together. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Where's the sponsored die coming from? So the majority of it is from uh, this fundraise that we recently completed. It's it's basically we just took part of the fundraise and converted it to die and put it in the pool. Um, but also um, some of it's just from any anyone can technically sponsor. There's just a public link. Anyone can use it. So some of it's just from uh, individuals that want to support the project. Gotcha. No, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. That definitely adds to the value proposition for sure. Yeah, I was struggling. Should I, you know, buy a couple hundred tickets? Should I just buy five and put the rest in compound? So th this is definitely, I'm sure, something a lot of people are thinking about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's so that's why I said right now there's a uh, right at seven hundred fifty thousand die in terms of tickets, seven hundred fifty thousand tickets that have been sold, and then there's two hundred fifty thousand sponsored. So the total pool right now is just over a million. So you you and I were talking a little bit before about like upcoming events you're going to be at and stuff, and you were mentioning ETH Denver. One of the questions I was going to ask you is what new features are you planning over the next three months? So can you just kind of tell us a little bit about short-term roadmap and what you guys are thinking feature-wise? Yeah, for sure. So um, it might sound obvious, but like one thing we're focused on right now is more prizes for more people. <laughs> um, like we want to help people uh, win more prizes. And we think the best way to do that without fragmenting um, kind of the liquidity is to enable people to link their tickets together and then split um, the prize if any of those people win. So the idea is like if you only have 10 die in the pool, if you only have 10 tickets, you can link your tickets with a bunch of other people. And then if any of those people win, you all will split the prize proportionally based on how much you contributed to, to um, what we're calling the pod. You would join a pod and link your tickets together. So we think that's like a super, super important um, addition to the protocol 
because it will essentially let people like pick the risk and return level they want, right? So like some people could just say like, I just want to have a chance to win a really big prize. I'm just going to go in by myself. But then others who are more economically minded could say, I want to have a 25% chance of winning each time. And so I'm going to join this pod and obviously I'll get a smaller prize, but the prize I get will be much more than the interest I would have earned. So that's, um, we're launching a, a um, initial prototype of that at ETH Denver. And so that's like a really big focus. And then as soon as we're done with that, the next thing is, is onboarding. Um, like we really want to improve uh, the onboarding experience, uh, you know, direct um, fiat conversion on the site, th- those types of things. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And that's something I want to talk about too. And in, in, in this next question I have here for you about mainstream adoption of pool together, but on the pods, that's a great idea. Uh, how, how are people going to like discover others to join up with? Are you going to add any kind of like social features here, like a three box integration? Or are you hoping that people just kind of do it through friends they know, or how's that going to work on the site? Not to ruin your product announcement or anything, but... No, no, you're not ruining the product announcement. I mean, I think that we're not 100% sure exactly what that's going to look like. That So we're going to use the ETH Denver. So we're creating a pod, and it's going to be hosted at like ethdenver.pooltogether.com. So we'll have its own subdomain, and we'll be open sourcing all the front end for that too, so people could create their own. Um, but that's going to be sort of our test is that, and we're going to kind of see how it goes and decide from there how to do it. But um, I think the important, so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out, but I do think the, the big emphasis for us is like, we want to make sure, um, a lot of people can win prices, right. Even if it's not uh, really big ones. Yeah, absolutely. It keeps people interested. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of something I thought about with the, it. Well, you guys just launched the daily USDC ones, but it's even something for me. It's like, okay, well, it's once a week. Like my odds are super low with the amount of tickets I had. Like it's not a high engagement thing. So it, it would be nice to bring in some higher engagement probably for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a really important thing. Yeah, and, and what's funny is when you mentioned the pods and like the social aspect, I instantly thought of like you know being in an office and like a group of people buy a lottery ticket together. Like that's yeah. a very similar concept, right? Yeah, and that's the you know again like we're hopefully mapping onto behavior that already happens and just making a better way to do that same behavior, right? Like we're not asking people to do something totally different. We're saying like. You already you already do this. You already do an office pool. You already do a family family pool. You already do like a, a pool with your college friends. So why not why not do one here where it's like way easier and, and better? Yeah, for sure. Now you guys just need some like dramatic drawing that you do like a YouTube live stream for the winners every week. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, we thought about that because there is a, a little bit of like the HQ trivia dynamic to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm planning actually DeFi Dad and I are oh, planning nice. to do a little bit of like a countdown AMA slash like tech support session yeah. um, this Friday. So we'll see how that goes. Nice, nice. Big fan of DeFi Dad. So that I'll definitely tune into that. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned I was going to ask you about mainstream adoption. You alluded a little bit to it, you know, for onboarding. But so I... I'm leading this question a little bit here. I personally think Pool Together has the potential to be the first kind of like mainstream breakthrough app for Ethereum because I think it it takes away that risk of loss that a lot of people think yeah. about when they think of crypto and you know who doesn't like gambling and lotteries, right? Like they're they're huge and the, especially in the United States, obviously. Um, did you, do you agree with that? Do you think Pool Kit Together can be kind of a mainstream breakthrough app? And you know, what are the current pain points that you guys are hitting to that would inhibit that right now? And how are you trying to fix them? Yeah, no, that's definitely that's definitely our goal for sure. So like our number one uh, like key performance metric that we're tracking is unique users in the pool, right? So that's what we care about even more so than um, like total amount of money in the pool. And uh, we do care about that's like our number two is total amount of money in the pool. But like we're number one, we're, we're trying to get as many unique players as we possibly can. So um, I would definitely say that's our goal. And you know, you, you kind of said this, right? Like it's a really great on-ramp into the crypto ecosystem, right? And then people can go from here and they can sort of go into other higher risk products or they can go into other um, more complicated products. But this is like a super safe entry point. So um, yeah, I, I think the things that are holding us back from it right now are really uh, primarily around just kind of like wallets and, and uh getting um you know conversion fiat to uh to crypto conversion and those are things that are improving really rapidly right with like what um fortmatic's doing and argent and um ethereum um so we're really excited to start implementing some of the work those those teams have been doing to make our onboarding experience a lot better um i do think there is maybe a little bit of like it's too good to be true right so like people need to sort of understand 
to really trust it, they need to sort of understand um, like how some background and like how does how do stable coins work in the first place and like is it guaranteed to stay stable and and we have to have this really delicate tension of making sure people are aware of the risks they're taking, but um, also not like explaining it to such a degree that they just totally get lost. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the tricky things, especially once we start to hit some mainstream adoption. Like, you do have to be upfront about that stuff, but like, not enough necessarily. Like, you want to be upfront, but not enough where it's like plastered everywhere and it just scares them off, right? That's the the tricky part. Yeah, it's definitely a tension to to manage. And I think you know, a part of that it depends on how much money they're putting in, right? Like, one die is a lot different than a thousand. And that's a lot different than a hundred thousand. Uh, have you guys thought about like insurance a lot on the pools? I know, you know, that's something that a lot of people are looking for these days when they're moving into like die savings rate or compound. Um, is that something you, you plan to offer at all in the future? Yeah, that is, that is, I would say, um, we've talked to like Nexus about that right now. Um, they basically, the pool's a lot bigger than their insurance cap is. So that's not a, that's not a possibility for us right now, but, um, I, de- I definitely see that in the future. Yeah, it, it would be insured. And I think that is a big, a big peace of mind thing to get new people in, uh, onboarded. Yeah, I, I think where we're like missing on the insurance a little bit, and this would actually, I feel like play well into pool together is just like a native option to take it out of like your interest. So almost like on pool together, it would just take it slowly out of your tickets. Like, so over time, your tickets, you know, over like 100 years would go down to zero or whatever, if it's 1% a year. But um, I think we're, I'm hoping we get there soon when it comes to these DApps and insurance. Yeah, for sure. That's a that's a good point. I, we we have, I mean, we have invested a lot in like security audits. We've we've actually spent more money on those than anything, uh, <laughs> like even all of our salaries combined. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, but that's you know, security audits are just like they're great, but they're just one part of you know a robust kind of security system. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, we we can move on from insurance, not to not to bog it down there by any means. But um, you know, I know just recently, a couple of days ago, or on Monday, I guess yesterday, um, from when we're talking, you announced a funding raise. So, can you just give us some details about that? Yeah, for sure. So, um, so backstory on Pool Together is um, I pitched the idea at East Denver in 2019. I went to East Denver all by myself. Was super nervous, really insecure. And, but I went there on Friday and they had like an open pitch thing. And I pitched the idea at East Denver. Um, there's a couple guys who worked with me that weekend on it. Um, but ultimately that wasn't the, the team to push it forward. But I met Chuck and Brendan, my, my co-founders at the happy hour at the end of East Denver. And so that's how, um, we started working on pool together. And, um, so initially we built like a Rinkaby prototype and we posted that on the MakerDAO Reddit. And it was it was pretty popular, and uh, from that we got a very small grant, fifteen thousand from uh, Maker to uh, get an audit and to get us to mainnet, and so that paid for our first release, and then that went pretty well, and so uh, Maker gave us another grant, I think it was for thirty five thousand, and that got us to our V two that we released in September, um, and then uh, that was when we um, in September is when we started talking to a few. Um, a few different uh, venture capital firms that were really excited about the project. Um, the, our lead investor uh, being the number one, which was uh, IDEO, Colab Ventures. Um, and so they obviously have like a big social focus with a lot of the work they do, and they've been really supportive and interested from the beginning. And so that's kind of how uh, how it came together and what the background is. Nice. That's great. I guess anytime I see a project raise funds and they're currently not taking a fee, I kind of have to just default ask for plans of profit in the future. Uh, You guys have thought about that, I'm sure, but kind of where's your head at when it comes to that? Yeah, for sure. So our answer on that is, um, uh, you know, I think think there's a few things that would potentially make sense. One is like an earn.com style service, right? So I kind of referenced this earlier where we think we're operating like a really good on-ramp into into, uh, Ethereum and into crypto. And from there, it could be really natural for us to say like, hey, try out this product, try out that product. And those could be either products we operate and perhaps take a, a fee on, or they could be products that we don't operate, but the people who do operate those products are paying us to um, refer people into them. So I think that's a potential option. Um, but you know, our main, ta- our main kind of take on it is like, this is all super early. And we just believe like, if we can create a lot of value for a lot of people, we'll figure out some way to like capture some of that value. And um, I do think there's not a lot of like crypto native business models yet. And I do think though, I do think those will come around. And so I think it's a little bit of um, 
a little bit of time, but we're, we're, we're pretty confident. Like if we just like do our job really well, then that will take care of itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get the users and then you can figure it out from there. This is probably the best model to go with. Yeah. So right now you guys are using, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're using compound to generate all the interest. On yep. Pool that's together. correct. Okay. Are, are there plans now with the die savings rate out and we have an ERC 20 wrapper for that in Chai and there's other lending and borrowing platforms out there. Do you guys plan to leverage those and kind of like pull the interest to mitigate the risk a little bit, or are you just kind of sticking with compound? Yeah, our main, so like our, our default answer on this is like, we're not, right now we're not focused, focused on yield optimization. We're focused on like um, the front end and we're focused on like uh, decentralization of the protocol. Like we're focused on a lot of other, other things. Like, so I do think there's going to be opportunity for yield optimization, but um, both because of the just extra security risk of both like changing the system and also a lot of these newer tokens are um, obviously not DSR, but a lot of these newer services are not as tested as a uh, compound. So both because of, like the possible security risk, as well as just because of, you know, our desire to focus on like what we think we're uniquely contributing to the ecosystem. We're not really focused right now on optimizing the yield. We're more focused on those other things. So that's kind of our answer. I do think there will be a place in time for that, but um we want to like let some of these other pieces of the ecosystem mature and then kind of take a step back and reevaluate. You mentioned like next three months and eat Denver and releases there, but you know, what are kind of your, your visions for the product I would say in the next year or two, it sounds like most of the focus is going to be around new user onboarding. Well, yeah, I mean that the new user onboarding is hopefully somewhat of a short-term thing. I do think like for sure 2020 is also about decentralizing the protocol. Like that's that, that is going to be a part of it too. Um, the new user onboarding hopefully is like kind of like a March, April, <laughs> April thing. Um, you know, we would also hope like a year or two years from now that we would not be operating the only interface into the pool together protocol. We would hope that there would be other interfaces and in other languages or with other sort of like mechanisms that are, that are doing that. And, um, and we would hope that it would just be massive, right? So if you look at price link savings products, they're, they're huge in, in the UK, which has one of the most popular ones, the premium bonds. One in, uh, uh, or what is, sorry, it's either one in three or two in three. I can't remember right now. I think it's two in three uh, adults in the UK own premium bonds. And there's a hundred billion US dollars in premium bonds in the UK alone. So, you know, I don't think it's unrealistic to say in two years that there'd be a billion dollars in, um, in the pool together protocol. I mean, that's less than, that's less than 1% of just the UK market for it. So that's not, that's, that's really actually kind of a pessimistic number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if, if we can crack this on-ramp problem and like get better wallet solutions, like you were mentioning, I feel like, like obviously DeFi growth has been huge. We're almost up to like a billion dollars in total locked as a whole, but I really feel like that's going to be what opens the floodgates. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I mean, I think, tw- I think it's going to happen in 2020. That's, that's my prediction. Yeah. Like, I feel, I mean, for Pool Together, but I feel so good about so many other projects. There's so many great projects happening, and uh, I think it's going to be a great year. Yeah, it's crazy. Trying to keep up with this stuff is, like, impossible these days. Yeah. I mean, if you take, like, three hours off, you're like, <laughs> can't even keep up with what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, actually, this is something you and I talked about a couple months back on, on a call we had, but just kind of like other unique ways to leverage the idea of pool together. Obviously, this kind of goes to the core of like programmable interest. But, um, you know, Arda is a project that I think is pretty similar where they t- they pool funds and they donate to other projects. You know, what are just other unique ways that this concept can be applied? And do you think you're going to venture into those someday or are you just going to kind of let other projects t- tackle those? Yeah, I mean, this has been like a really hard thing because there's so many use cases for this that I am really excited about. And, um, but at the same time, you know, you can't do everything. Right. And so like, I, I'm a huge fan of our die. I think like what they built is brilliant. Um, it's like a really good abstraction of just like just the programmable interest that you can then kind of do whatever you want with. And I think like our trees is a really great implementation that's been built on our die. Um, so I, I do think the idea of no loss X, right? Like we have like <laughs> no loss savings, this prize link savings, but also no loss donations. I think it's like also a really great idea that will be a very large market. Um, and then I also think I really like this idea too of like no loss investing where like imagine your interest goes into like leverage long ETH or something like that, right? So like you never lose your principal, but then your interest is like super risky. So 
Um, I think basically, I guess what I'm saying is I think those are super compelling ideas, super exciting. I don't see us tackling those in the near term. Like I could for sure see people maybe using our contracts and doing stuff with those. Um, but I don't see like the pool together, at least interface, um, doing that. Uh, and that's really just because, uh, we're trying to just, we're trying to stay as focused as we can on like a really simple messaging and value proposition. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this concept in general is just fascinating. Like the ideas seem endless. I, I feel like we're just kind of cracking the the cases here and what could be used. I, I really like that R trees. I like their um, hashtag of donate with DeFi, basically donating with no loss to your principal. That's a very strong narrative, I think. Yeah, I saw a new one today. It was uh, TreeFi. <laughs> oh, nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I thought that I was pretty it. good. But yeah, yeah, they did a I've great got... job of packaging it. Our trees did. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a beautiful interface for for a DAP for sure. I, I have some planted. I think I'm up to like six and a half trees planted or something. Oh wow, like you have so, more than uh, me. I have some planted too. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, not six and a half. Yeah, I need. I haven't messed with like the power ups and stuff. I need to give them some better sun or some better water and stuff. But yeah, it's cool to see it counting up. You feel good about it for sure. Yep. Um, you know, one one question, I guess, just this is a question I pretty much ask every product related to DeFi. But are you worried at all about like regulations around this? You know, I'm not really up to speed on like no loss prize and lottery regulations in general. But is this something you guys have dedicated some time to or it's on your uh, radar at all? Yeah, it's definitely on our radar. We we have um we have a part time. So like I said, we have three employees, but we have a part time um uh lawyer on our team, and then additional to that, we also have um, external counsel that we've that we've contracted. So we definitely spend, or I I in particular spend a lot of time and energy and money on legal. I guess legal is probably the only thing that's close to like security audits in terms of the stuff we paid for. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's a it's a complicated area just because so much of what has been written in law was not written with DeFi in mind, obviously. And so striking that balance of like wanting to address the legitimate concerns of regulators, but also delivering on the power of this new technology we have is uh, is a tricky balance. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to really go into details of it, but I would definitely say it's a it's a big uh, focus for us and something we we spend a lot of time and attention on. Uh, I just want to talk to you like a little bit about just general DeFi. I mean, I, we were just talking about the explosive growth. It sounds like you think 2020 is going to be a big year in general for more breakthrough here. We're approaching, I think we're at like 3.1 million ETH locked and almost a billion dollars in DeFi. Um, do you see this still creeping up in 2020 and beyond? Like kind of what's your, what's your target for kind of where this lock in DeFi numbers going to end up leveling out a bit? Yeah, that's okay. So that's a good question. I mean, I would say my take overall is I think people are underestimating how fast the growth is going to happen. Like, I think that, um, yeah, I think we'll look back on this podcast like a year from now and be like, oh man, I, we, we had no idea what was coming. So I, I, I don't really track, to be honest, like the locked in DeFi numbers that much. So I can't necessarily speculate on like relative, like what that would look like in terms of a locked in DeFi number. But I just think that we are a lot closer to mainstream adoption than many people believe we are. Um, and I think, yeah, I just think like the progress we're making with um, things like Wire and MoonPay, with things like Argent, again, Ethereum, Fortmatic, et cetera, and with like the value props of the decentralized uh, DeFi apps that are built on Ethereum like it's all coming together right at the right, right at the same time. And I think, I think we're, I think we're, yeah, I think we're ready for, ready for mainstream. I mean, I shouldn't say mainstream. I should say we're ready for the early adopters, you know, the 15, 20% of people who are the early adopters. Yeah, agreed. And what's your, what's your thoughts on, I, I feel like there's two universes of thought. Some people think that DeFi is going to like usurp and take over the traditional system by kind of like infiltrating it. And then all of a sudden it's just a better solution. I'm personally in the, the thought that it's going to take, you know, a long time, if ever, for the two worlds to collide. And we're just going to kind of create this like parallel financial universe. Like if you like the benefits of DeFi, you use this. If you like the benefit of traditional, you use that. Um, do you have thoughts around that? I think I think we'll, I think we'll see a big blending. I think that would be my thought. Like I think that there will be a time when you, your money that's in, um, you know, uh, your, your traditional bank account at Charles Schwab is earning interest on compound. Like, I think that there can be a, a blending that will happen um, to some degree. Um, I don't know if we'll see them as like segmented in the future. I guess, I guess that's probably my main thought, but 
you know, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's something Anthony and I have started talking about more and more recently. Like as I see these products being built, like I, I just don't know how they're going to collide. Uh, it'll be very fascinating to watch play out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. Yeah, and getting privacy solutions online, it seems like slowly here too with like Tornado Cash and like Aztec just launched like uh, ZK Die to implement into apps and stuff. Like we need that for sure when it comes to financial apps. Yeah, I would agree. That's that's huge. But and that's and that's again like one of the reasons I'm so excited about all this stuff is it's just like so much. Even like Tornado Cash is pretty new, and then like. Um, all these different things that are, that are coming out. Like my, my new thing I'm super excited about is curve finance. Like, I feel like that's an amazing thing. Like that's like a 10 X improvement in like token stable coin swaps. And that's like just happened in the last month, you know? It's awesome. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. I'm checking that out too. Cause it was just so painful to go from like USD. I mean, really the feeless path to die from USD was like USD to USDC on Coinbase, USDC to die feeless on DYDX and then into the DSR. <laughs> like that's just not good user experience. And the curve finance thing to get like no slippage basically on stable coins is huge. You actually get opposite slippage if you do USDC to uh, die. Oh, really? <laughs> you end up with like more die than you had. Interesting. I've had that happen a few times. Yeah, yeah. I think they just finished their audit and are fixing a couple small vulnerabilities or something like that. I, I need to go check it out after that all goes through. Yeah, we should give the disclosure, you know? Yeah. It's not financial advice. Yeah, exactly. We're not your security researchers. Yeah, exactly. At least not when it comes to Curve. Yeah, yeah. Well, Leighton, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I love the product. How can people kind of keep up with you and the team and, and most importantly, go try Pool Together? Yeah, so try and Pool Together, that would be awesome. Pooltogether.com. Um, we are super responsive to like support requests and feedback. So if you can email us at um, hello at pooltogether.com or... Um, uh, see us in Discord or Telegram. I would say Twitter is the best place to keep up with us. We post a lot in terms of like what's happening in our updates, but would really just be super grateful if people would just give it a try and just let us know the feedback. Yeah, definitely suggest people check it out. And the user experience is nice and I really enjoyed doing it. So if you haven't yet, go check it out. Well, Leighton, appreciate you joining me. Keep up the good work and uh, we'll follow up in the future. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for listening to Into the Ether. You can subscribe to the podcast and newsletter at ethub.substack.com, find our website at ethub.io, and follow us on Twitter at at econoar and at sassel0x.